Hi, I'm Bridget Esslinger with the Health and Wellness Boot Camp, and we're here with episode nine of the Health Warrior series. And today we're gonna to talk about the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system, which are crucial to our overall health. So stick around. Welcome and thank you for joining me here today and happy new year, happy new decade. It's crazy how we burst into this new decade and January is already come and gone and here we are the first part of February. And you might be thinking to yourself, where did the month go? And my, maybe you're thinking to yourself, I made some new year's resolutions and you're not quite remembering what those are. And maybe you had some other goals in mind. And when we start doing that to ourselves, maybe we stress ourselves out a little bit. Maybe we overtax our systems. That's what we're gonna talk about here today. Sometimes less is more. And we're gonna dive in and we're gonna talk about the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous systems and what that means to our overall health. So first let's talk about the difference between the two. Our sympathetic nervous system is one of the autonomic nervous systems and its general reaction is to mobilize our fight or flight. So what I mean by that is your body assumes that you're being chased by a lion, tiger, or bear. You're going into that protection mode. Something is definitely coming after you and your body is preparing all the defense mechanisms to keep you safe. The other system is our parasympathetic nervous system, which is the other branch of our um, autonomic nervous system. And this system controls homeostasis within the body and it engages our rest and digest, and I like to add restore and renew to our bodies. So if you think of this like when you're calm and relaxed, maybe you're on a beach with your toes in the sand, maybe you're just um, sitting underneath your favorite tree, maybe you're taking your dog for a walk and you have no worries in the world, that is when your sympathetic nervous system is engaged. So we're gonna dive in today and talk about the differences of when we are in our sympathetic nervous system versus our parasympathetic nervous system and truly what that does to our health. So here we have the function of the sympathetic nervous system. So let's just talk about this. Like I said, the function is controls the body's response to, to a perceived threat. Where does it originate? So where are you going to feel this when your body is engaging? It's in the thoracic spine. That's right there between the shoulder blades, almost up into the neck area, and the lumbar regions of the spinal cord, so the lower back. So stop, let's just think about that for a minute. When was the last time you were stressed? When was the last time you felt tense? When was the last time you were scared? Where did you feel that? Were you all hunched up? Did you feel that in your neck, in your shoulders, perhaps in your back, your lower back? That's your body talking to you. And again, our bodies communicate with us. It's our jobs to listen. So just take note as I explain where some of these things happen at and what the responses are. What's the body's general response when we're in the sympathetic nervous system? Everything speeds up, right? Our heart races faster, we tense up. Maybe we become a little bit more alert, but the wrong kind of alert, and I'll talk about that here in just a second. Functions not critical to survival shut down. Let me say that again. Functions critical for survival shut down. We're gonna dive into that. Your heart increases, like I said. Your pulmonary systems, your, your bronchial tubes dilate so you can get more oxygen because maybe you're hyperventilating, your breathing is shorter and more rapid. Your skeletal system contracts, right? Muscles get tight because you're getting ready to pair, prepare for war. This is what your body believes. Your pupils dilate. Your gastrointestinal systems shut down. Those excretions stop. So that goes back to those functions not critical to, for, to survival shut down. Well, 
eating is critical for survival, but not necessarily in a short period of time. We can go days, if not weeks, without eating, so the body doesn't care. The body is gonna shut that mechanism down. Your saliva glands are not gonna produce saliva like they need to to break down the, the foods, the enzymes in your system. That's gonna shut down, right? Um, your adrenal glands are gonna start pumping more cortisol into the body because again, you're running from something. You're truly fighting for your life. That's what your body believes. Um, your glucose levels, right, are pumping into your system to give you that, that um, energy that you need, that recall that you need, that fast burst of energy to take off. And then lastly, the urinary tract system slows down as well, right? You don't, you, you don't need to go to the bathroom. You're trying to run from something. So it's gonna shut that system down. So a couple of key notes there to take note of is the functions for survival shut down. When we live in this flight or fight mode, which most of us do, most, I mean, 90% of our day, and even when we're sleeping, we can be tense and in this mode and not realize it, those systems shut down. So let me just give you a scenario. You're stressed for a little bit of time. You're tense in the shoulders. Maybe you can't recall. Maybe your memory's not working all that great. Um, this happens for a day or two, and then maybe it goes on for a week or two, and then it goes on for a month, and then it goes on for several months, and that stress, whatever that stressor is in your life, is not being eliminated. You're not addressing it. You're not, you know, you're not confronting whatever that stressor is. Think of the deficiency that's happening in your body. You're not breaking down the foods that you're eating because your system has shut that down. You're eating, but your body is not assimilating and metabolizing the food you're eating. Your urinary tract and system and your gastrointestinal systems aren't functioning as they should, right? So maybe you become constipated. Maybe um, you have gut issues. You have a belly ache. You are not passing the foods. So because we're not um, assimilating and metabolizing the foods we're eating, then you have a nutritional deficiency. Then you're not feeling well. Then we're not sleeping well. So do you see the cascade of effects here of being in this fight or flight mode? That's so critical to our overall health and so important that we look at our everyday lives and say, am I hunched up? Does my back hurt? Does my lower back hurt? Am I going to the bathroom like I should? Do I feel good? So just think about those things next time you wanna get stressed out. And that's just everyday stressors, we all have them, but it's recognizing what's stressing us out and taking precautionary measures so you don't stay there. We're gonna talk about this in a little bit more in depth here about the things you can do to rectify this and back out of the sympathetic nervous system. But just know that that system is important for us in short bursts. Our sympathetic nervous system was designed for us to truly fight, to stay alive. I'll give you an example. If you're in a car wreck, right, you have that instant burst of energy. Maybe um, there's a car wreck or you come upon someone who's injured and you have Herculean uh, power to move something that's got somebody trapped. All of a sudden you get that burst of energy, right? It's quick, it's right now, and it can happen. That's what our sympathetic nervous system is meant to do. Or perhaps you are in the wilderness and um, you are truly running from a lion, tiger, or bear. Your body's gonna kick in. Those systems are gonna give you what you need to make that happen, but it's for a short amount of time. It's not going to last long. So when we stay there for long periods of times, days, weeks, months, you can see how that's gonna deplete the systems. That system isn't gonna fire as quickly when we truly need it and then your body suffers because of that. So let's move on to the parasympathetic nervous system, what it truly is and what its function is. So the function is to control the body's response while at rest. And this doesn't mean just while we're sleeping, right? It's at rest, meaning we're not running or fighting from anything. Where does it originate? It's the sacral region of the spinal, uh, the spinal cord, the medulla, and your cranial nerves, right? It has to do with our brain and how we feel and through the spinal cord, that's where all of our nervous systems, that's where that whole communication system um, resides in the body. It activates our rest, digest, and like I say, I like to add the renew and restore to our bodies. The general body response is to counterbalance and restore the body's state of calm. What does the heart rate do? it definitely decreases. Our heart doesn't need to pump as hard and fast if we're relaxed. The pulmonary systems, your bronchial tubes, 
are constricted, they're fine, they don't need to open up for a lot of oxygen to get into the system, you can breathe normally and it feels fine. Your musculoskeletal systems, your muscles are relaxed. Your pupils are constricted just like they should be. They're not wide and alert. Um, your gastrointestinal systems increase the secretion functions. Your salivary glands work like they should and those enzymes are pumping into your body when you're eating foods. Your adrenal glands, absolutely no involvement. We don't need our adrenal glands if we're completely relaxed. And what about the glycogen and the glucose? Um, no involvement. We don't need it to come into our bodies to help those muscles activate quickly and get that burst of energy. So there's no involvement. And our urinary responses work just fine. You'll be going to the bathroom like nobody's business. So that rest and digest, renew and restore is so important. Bringing yourself to that state is so easy. We have the best prescription medicine readily available at our fingertips at any moment of any single day, and that's your breath. If you just breathe in, nice controlled breaths, fill the body up and exhale it out. Let those stressors go. And what you're doing is you're sending a signal to your body, actually the internal organs, everything inside you saying, systems are okay. I am truly not running or fighting from anything. So when you lengthen that breath and you calm your body down, the next time you're feeling stressed or perhaps your boss yells at you or you have a coworker who's getting on your nerves, you have a child who you're struggling with, park yourself in a dark corner, just get some quiet time and really focus on your breath. For five minutes, just calm the body down. So let's talk about um, some more effects of the sympathetic nervous system and what that means. I talked about it in its short burst, right? It's only designed for like 90 seconds or less. You need that short burst of energy to get away. Something else that's so critical when you're in the sympathetic nervous system, again, because systems for survival um, that are not needed for survival shut down, that means we're not gonna heal as quickly as we need to. And that's anything. That's healing from a cold, that's healing from a wound, um, that's internal healing. Um, our body slows down because the mechanisms that need to heal are being shut down. The body doesn't think we need to do that right now because you're trying to fight from something. You're running from something. So the more stressed you are, the more unhealthy you're going to be. We talked about it affects sleep. And when we don't get enough sleep, if you don't get that good, you know, I'm gonna say seven to eight hours of good rest every single night, you start to deplete that bank, right? When we're asleep, that's when our body goes into action. Our body goes in and tries to repair and restore all the systems that we've used all day long. So when you're at that restful state and the parasympathetic nervous system is engaged, all the body is trying to you know, restore us and prep us for the next day so you wake up renewed and refreshed. And when we are activating those adrenal glands in that sympathetic nervous system every single day, maybe you have the feeling where you lay down at night and you try and go to sleep and you're just completely exhausted. You're just, I wanna just go to sleep, but you're so wired. You're like, I can't go to sleep. My mind is just racing, but I wanna go to sleep. That is what we call adrenal fatigue. So you've been in this state of your fight or flight mode all day long, maybe for days, weeks, months. You're trying to rest, but your body has pumped all this cortisol into your system because it thinks you're fighting, you're preparing for war, you're running from something. So your body hasn't used that cortisol because you're obviously not running from something, but the body's reaction is the same. Whether it's real or perceived, your body believes it to be true and that cortisol is pumping into your system. So when that happens all day and you get to that evening time when you want to sleep, your body's like, you got all kinds of energy. You need energy and you need to go do something to burn that off. And that's why we have that tired but wired feeling. And when we don't sleep good, then we create a whole nother deficiency and a cascade effects of other health issues. And along those lines, um, the glucose activates an insulin response. So that's that burst of energy we need. The body's calling for quick energy. So if we are doing that constantly, maybe you become insulin resistant, perhaps even throws you into being diabetic. So that's another factor of somebody who is completely stressed out. 
um, you retain a bunch of sodium, which is water retention in the body, and you dump potassium, right? We don't want to do that. We need those minerals in our body to, to be healthy. So here's some examples. Like I mentioned like you're in a car accident um, and the recall goes away. Even though your body is giving you a short burst of energy because you're running from something, um, it may be little things like this. I call it brain fog. When we're in the sympathetic nervous system for long periods of time, we end up with what we call brain fog. Then it goes something like this. Oh my gosh, uh, I was just in here and I don't know what I came into this room for. Or I can't remember where I put my car keys. I don't remember where I even parked my car. Or it could look something like in that car accident. Maybe you were just in a quick car accident. You weren't hurt. You're okay because your body protected you. But when somebody asks you about what happened, you can't recall that. That was your sympathetic nervous system kicking in. It got rid of that short-term memory because it wasn't critical to survival at that time. Does that make sense? So another thing that happens is you get the loss of bone formation. When we're stressed out for long periods of time, now remember early on I shared with you that we get a new skeleton system every 10 years. That's pretty amazing. So your body rejuvenates itself and repairs itself every 10 years. However, if we're deficient in areas, the body's really gonna struggle to make that happen. So again, it's your job to make sure that we don't stay in the sympathetic nervous system, but for 90 seconds when it's needed, not all day, every day for days, months, weeks, okay? Also loss of collagen, and that is so important for our ligaments, tendons, bones, joints. Cartilage is the number one abundant protein in the body. It is the glue that holds us together. So when we're stressed, that collagen production is lacking and our body struggles to make it. And we don't get it in food sources either. So again, another thing just to keep an eye on. And lastly, stress, right? That's what engages that sympathetic nervous system. Stress activates inflammation in the body and when you reside there, you become sick. And that's not what we want. So one last thing I wanna share here is, think about um, the last time you got sick like you got a cold, or perhaps somebody who even was diagnosed with some kind of chronic illness or disease, perhaps even cancer. What was happening in their life a month, two months, or even three months prior to them being diagnosed or you getting sick? Were you stressed out? Was there something stressful happening in your life? It's very interesting when you can stop and put that into perspective, just back up and look at your last two months, three months, maybe even it's been a year, but it doesn't happen overnight, folks. This stuff creeps up on us and it, we think that it just happened. And trust me, it didn't. It's a work in progress. And when the body stays inflamed for long periods of time, bad things can happen. And that's when illness sets in. So what can we do? Here are the things that you have at your disposal. I talked about breathing, right? Go to that quiet place. I don't care where it's at, where you can just close your eyes and take it all in. Focus on your breath and only focus on your breath. Even though that those wandering thoughts are gonna try and creep in your mind, acknowledge them and then just ask them to step aside and you'll come back to them when you're done with your breathing technique. Breathe in for a count of five or six, whatever that looks like for you, and then breathe out in that same length. And try that for five minutes and just see how you feel when you're done. Take a vacation, right? Even if it's just a day away, just step away from the craziness. Step away from whatever it is that's, that's got you all tensed up. Just go away. Go for a drive somewhere. Maybe you go stay overnight somewhere nice. Treat yourself and just step away and take a breath. Don't take things so serious. And just ask yourself, is it really worth it? Like, can you affect change, whatever it is that's bothering you? You know, if we're all worked up over, you know, government politics, if we don't have a direct action or a correlation to solve something, why are we consuming our energy with that? Why am I giving my energy to something that I can't affect? Now it's different like in a relationship. If you can affect that relationship and you can have open communication or you're fighting with someone and you can approach them and see if you can't squelch whatever that tension is, then absolutely that's within your control. But things that aren't within your control, let them go. It's not worth it. You need to ask yourself that. Is this worth it? Should I be upset about this? Can I affect this? Those things are important. 
The other thing is be playful, laugh, you know, go out into nature more. As we get older, we've seemed to have lost that. And as the generations come in, we've seemed to have lost that just go outside, play. I mean, when was the last time you were outside and you saw kids riding their bikes or playing on a playground, um, just being in nature? What about families who went camping and enjoyed the great outdoors together? I mean, those things truly, I mean, they really boost our health and, and give you health and wellness. It's amazing when you go spend time in nature, even if it's in your backyard with your bare feet on the grass. That's amazing. Gentle exercise. And notice how I said gentle. It's great for someone who wants to go do some HIIT training, if you want to go boxing, weightlifting, all those things are great and they have their time and place. But if you're someone who has a tendency to be overly stressed and you stay in that mode for long periods of time, what do you think your body's doing when you go do those extraneous exercises? Do you think it's relaxing? Absolutely not. Remember, it's perceived. Whatever your body perceives is real. So if I'm lifting a bunch of weights, if I'm running on a treadmill, if I'm doing HIIT training or CrossFit, my body is still sensing that same reaction. It's trying to give me that boost of energy I need so I can fight. And all those other systems are still shutting down. So ask yourself when you're doing that training, how is, what did your day look like? What did your week look like? And if your bank is deficient in the rest and digest, then I would probably take a second look at your exercise program and maybe focus more on gentle movement. It's great to move. We all need movement every single day, but what's that movement look like? So perhaps um, gentle exercise looks like yoga, maybe meditation where you're just sitting quietly and doing some gentle stretching. Um, go for a walk, that's always great. In nature is even an added bonus. Or just do something you enjoy, whatever that looks like for you. But find that, tap into that, and you know, deposit in your bank. That parasympathetic nervous system needs deposits all the time because we deplete it every single day. What about healthy lifestyle changes? Keto, the keto diet, we've all heard about that. It has its time and place as well. Intermittent fasting is another one. That's, those are great modalities to use when our, you know, our life is so hectic, but our, what we consume and the nutrition that we have and the lifestyle that we have all contribute to whether you were in the parasympathetic or the sympathetic nervous system. So again, just take note of what you're eating and how you're nourishing your body. Acupuncture is another great modality you can use. It's a great stress reliever. And again, it's time and place. Talk to your doctors about it. Um, see a holistic or a naturopathic doctor. Um, some chiropractors offer it as well. So it's another one that can help you step back into that rest, digest, restore, and renew the parasympathetic nervous system. And watch your vitamins. Like I mentioned earlier, when we're stressed out, our body depletes. It doesn't take in, right? It's not taking in the nutrition that we're eating. It depletes it and flushes it because it's not needed. It's not critical for survival at the time. Just remember that. You can eat as healthy as you want. You can exercise as much as you want. But if you are a stressed out person and you're in there and it's chronic, you're going to remain sick. So potassium, magnesium, B1 vitamins, all those are great and can help replenish your body. It's vital for us and you need to be stress free. And just remember, if there's no inflammation, there's no illness and that's a fact. So you've got to bring the inflammation down in the body, engage the parasympathetic nervous system and you'll be healthy. I hope you have enjoyed this. Maybe now you have a different perspective on your body and understanding some of its nervous systems. And next time you're stressed out, maybe you'll take a second look at yourself and ask, is it worth it? and practice some more rest, digest, renew, and restore modalities. Engage that parasympathetic nervous system as much as you can, and remember, that's where we should be, and sometimes less is more. I'll see you next time. Enjoy. Hi, it's Bridget again, and I just wanted to share with you some of the events that are happening here at Health and Wellness Boot Camp. Um, I'm super excited to announce that the Yoga Trapeze is live and well. A lot of classes are scheduled. It's typically Wednesday nights at 5.30. Um, 
Fridays at noon, that's every other Friday at noon, some Saturdays and some Sundays. I only have six spots available for each class, so they fill up fast and you need to get in and check it out. It's super, super relaxing. You get strength, mobility, and flexibility. It's amazing. It takes your yoga practice to a whole new level. So I hope you'll check it out. And just traditional floor yoga is still offered as well. That's typically Wednesdays or Tuesdays and Thursdays at 5.30. I offer you just to hop on over to the Health and Wellness Bootcamp Facebook page, check the events, click the tickets, re reserve your spot, and I hope to see you in a future class. So what's the difference between yoga and yoga trapeze? Well, so some of you have seen on social media or out there in the mainstream what yoga looks like, right? They look like contortionists. Well, let me just clear the slate. Yoga is meant for any body, any body shape, any body size, any age. You don't have to look a certain way, you don't have to be a certain way, and you don't have to be able to get into all those crazy poses that you see on social media. I just wanna make that clear. And it's beneficial for all ages and all body types. Your body will benefit from it. We just talked about the parasympathetic nervous system and yoga is a great way to get in to the parasympathetic nervous system. You're focusing on breath, you're really focusing on your body, you're coming back to center, you're being authentic with yourself. So that stigma needs to go away. When I found yoga, it changed my life. I was a high stress person. I was somebody who didn't think yoga was for me and when I tried it, I fell in love with it and it has stuck with me, obviously, I become a certified instructor. Then, I was introduced to the yoga trapeze, and that took it to a whole new level, right? So on the floor, you're using your body weight. In the trapeze, you're suspended, and you're using gravity along with those poses. So you get a longer stretch, you're straightening out that spine. When we sit, we're compressed, and when you hang upside down, that allows the spine to come in contraction. Right, We open up in between each one of those vertebrae, which is beautiful, it's a very beautiful feeling. So not only do we breathe and we stretch the body out, we have that strength that comes with it because we're suspended and it's a suspended trainer as well, so you're building strength, flexibility, and mobility. It's beautiful. Your body gets to open up. You open up those um, detox pathways, which are your lymphatic system, etc. So when you hang upside down, there's added benefits and your body will thank you. So I hope you'll come and check it out. They're amazing. Don't let them intimidate you. And if you're somebody who thinks that yoga was never meant for you, trust me, it's meant for you. And I want to see you in a future class.